like to we'll gather around the altar. We'll go to the Lord in prayer. Fellowship with those around you. If you want to follow along, number 240. This is the Greek book. Number 240. <laughs> Uh, 
uh, it's been proven that you smile at least 350 times a day from the ages, I think it was of 3 to 15. And from 15 until 80, that number gets cut in half. And I don't know about anybody, that, that depresses me. <laughs> and then I thought, my God, what, what, what's the difference? What, what happens when you hit 15 when you hit 80? And it kind of hit me a little bit. You don't really care when you're 15. And you've lived long enough that you know God's got it by the time you get <laughs> I, I want to remind us, if it's fine with you, I know that God saved us to have convictions. Yeah. And I know He saved us to have standards. And there's things we've got to live by. But God help us remember, He saved us that our joy could be full. God help us beat that statistic. Amen. <laughs> I, hope, I hope when they recorded that stat, they looked at him and said, have you been born again? Because I'd like to see the stats amongst children of God. And if it drops, I just need to call a couple of Bibles. Amen. <laughs> Amen. I need to pray much. Um, Brother Dennis, that's Miss Sharon's brother. Uh, Brother Dennis' mother-in-law, Miss Mala's mother, again passed this past weekend. That's where Brother Larry is at tonight. So please be in prayer uh, for them. That whole family, please, please do. Be much in prayer. Miss Holly had a request of prayer for uh, Mr. Eric, a uh, dear friend of hers. I've uh, been requesting prayer for him for some time. He passed, I believe, today. Uh, so please be much in prayer for that family. Anything else on your heart tonight? My boss's mother in law, Miss Linda, they diagnosed her with
perfect opportunity for hate to rise. But God, with your love, wash over it. Lord, I pray, Jesus, help me not. Lord, I pray for Wayland's parents, Jesus, I love them. I pray you help, I pray you strengthen, I pray you heal, bless Wayland, bless Jessica, bless the kids. Father, I pray, Lord, this one was blessed, Lord Jesus, the dear lady. Father, I thank you for the answered prayer, Lord, for kindergarten teacher. But Father, I pray, Lord, for a lot of me. Bless Jesus in the prayer. Help us tonight, Lord. Help us tonight. Help us love you. Help us lean for your guilt and grace. In your name we pray. Amen. God bless you. Sick 
or seven Bibles. So it's all going to be okay. And uh, I got up here tonight to take up prayer requests. And my, 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 my boy Moran right there on the pulpit. I say, I might not mean much to you, but I like my Bibles. I just do. I ain't going to lie, first thought I had when I saw it. I said, now Lord, I've got two Bibles. Am I supposed to double preach? What do you want me to do? He didn't think that was funny either. Amen. <laughs> Anybody got a song testimony on your heart tonight? Karen, I need a favor. Would you care to sing that I've got happy? Faithful help God. Oh, the day. 
step back. <coughs> Chase was in a daughter's big four yesterday. Uh, Rick was at home with the dog. Uh, we went to this place to eat. Uh, there was a farmer there. And uh, got a farm up north somewhere. And anyway, he said he just had to get away. And uh, I got to talking to him, and he just meant it. You know, he just meant it. He just needed somebody to talk to, I guess. And uh, he finished his dinner when he got to that life. He said, Oh, well, thank you for just listening to me. He said, I just I took, I took all I could take, and I just had to get away. And uh, he told me, he said, it's going to cost you $2,000 to fill your tractor up with fuel. Uh, he said, it, that kind of bothers you. kind of works on you. And, uh, but he left there happy. Yeah. Uh, he told the lady that was working there and under the cash register, told her to have a good day. And he said, I'm going to have a good day. And, and he just seemed like he walked out there happy. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of people in this world that just like to have somebody to have to do. Yeah. They just like to have somebody to just uh, pour it all out. And, yeah. Uh, we've got somebody we pour it all out to. We walk to it. Yeah. And his name is Jesus Christ. Amen. Uh, he knows what we need before we ask. Yeah. But let me tell you something. If you want to bend, uh, I don't know of a better one to talk to. Yeah. Uh, listen, I know he'll listen to you. He won't make fun of you. He won't yeah. criticize you. Yeah. He'll say he'll listen to the whole story. Yeah. Uh, and my friend, let me tell you something. When you get done with the hand, you'll feel better. Amen. Uh, I've yeah. had to do it. I know what I'm talking about. I've had to do it to him. And uh, things come up in my life. I didn't realize what was going on. And I had to just go to him and say, Lord, we've got to have a talk. We've got to have a talk. Something's going on here that I don't know about. And, uh, you know, I, I just got to think about that. He just a middle-aged farmer. But he left there happy. Yeah. Because somebody, he sat over at his table, and somebody took the time. That I just started a conversation with him. And he just unloaded. Yeah. And uh, I thought, Lord, if I got to help that man just a little bit, uh, that was worth the trip. Yeah. And uh, I just praise God that we've got somebody. Yeah. Uh, I've got a personal savior that I can go to and talk to him about my problems. And this world's full of problems. Yeah. No thing is going to get better. My friend, let me tell you something. No thing is going to get better when I walk out of this world. I take that uh, flight you was talking about Sunday morning. When I take the flight every morning, uh, yeah. and God comes and gets me. Yeah. Let me tell you something. It'll be worth it all. Amen. I'm glad to be in God's house today. Amen. Oh. I feel better right now. I feel all day long. It seems like when I get up, I'm just sluggish as can be. I can hop the ground. And as my day goes on, it seems like uh, it just gets a little better. And I'm glad I got to come and ask God. Amen. And uh, I know about the song this Sunday. He heard my prayer, and I got happy. He heard my prayer, and I got happy. Yeah. And I walked out of that place deep, happy. Huh? Yeah. Because I have a son in law right there that needs the Lord in his heart and his life, and he got to hear every bit of that. Yeah. He got to hear it all. He's about things. Things. He loves things. And let me tell you something, I hope you pray to my God. One of these days I'll hear him say, I love Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. <coughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. Somebody else?
I appreciate the night's service, don't you? Yes. What a blessing. What a blessing. Amen. Get your Bibles ready. We'll pray and we'll look into God's Word together. Uh, loaded tonight. Uh, have no clue if we're going to be able to get through everything tonight. But I guess that's what God made the next service for. So you pray for us. Our Father in heaven, we look to you, God. We thank you for this night. God is special to me. And I praise you for it. Lord, everything that's been said and done is ministered, Lord, to us tonight. God, you've done so good at just speaking to us. And I praise you for Thursday night meeting. We'll get to come in here from heaven. Father, in such a special way, Father, I pray you help us, encourage us from your word. Lord, don't let Chase say anything. Just Jesus, just Jesus is my prayer. Father, I pray you encourage the discourage with the strength of the weak. Lord, would you, exhort, would you exhort the downtrodden is my prayer. And Lord, above everything, would our lives be to honor you. I love you, Lord. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. You can be seated if you would. Look with us tonight. The book of 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians chapter 10. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, if you have your Bible. chapter number 10. I believe we'll start verse 1. 1 Corinthians 10 and 1. Moreover, brethren, I would not that you should be ignorant how that all our fathers were passed under the cloud and all passed to the sea and all were baptized unto Moses in the cloud and the sea and they did all eat the same spiritual meat and all did drink the same spiritual drink for they drank of that rock which that followed them, and that rock was Christ. But with many of them God was not well pleased, for they were not, they were overthrown in the wilderness. Now these things were our examples for the intent. We should not lust after evil things, as they also lusted. Neither be idolaters, idolaters, or with some of them, as it is written, the people sat down to eat and drink, and they rose up to play. Neither let us commit fornication, as some of them committed, and fail in one day three thousand, I'm sorry, three and twenty thousand. Neither let us tempt Christ, as some of them, which also tempted and were destroyed of serpents, neither murmur, as some of them also murmured and were destroyed of the destroyer. Now all these things happen unto them for examples. And they are written for our admonition, upon whom the ends of the world are come. Wherefore, let him that thinketh he stands take heed lest he fall. There is no temptation taken you, but such is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that you are able, but with the temptation also make a way of escape that you may be able to bear it. Uh, I want to say this, and if you get your Bibles ready, we'll look at 1 Peter. Uh, 1 Peter, I apologize, 2 Peter. 2 Peter uh, chapter 1. 2 Peter 1. Uh, I want to say this, uh, as you're turning, uh, and this will be a small note, I pray that it is, uh, studying and reading over this, uh, how many of you know that there are some scriptures that people have made up and make it sound like the scripture? Sounds really, really good. It just does. Um, God will cast our sins as far as the east is from the west. All right, that's based on the scripture. The name scripture. Uh, I believe it's in the book of Joel, uh, if I've got that right. The, 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 the wording, we, we've made our own wording. Um, and then there's, and it's a true statement. Please don't, I'm not poking fun or mocking anyone. But how many of you have ever heard it said, or said to yourself, the Bible says that God won't put any more on us than what we can bear. Anybody ever heard it or said it? Yeah. Amen. I, I, I hate to do this, uh, but it's not book. Amen. Ain't that the y'all of Thursday night crowd? We can handle this stuff. All this time, been lying. I didn't say been biting, I said been lying. Amen. But I. Uh, Here's what I want to say to you as far as God won't put any more on us than what we 
can bear. If God doesn't put more on us than what we can bear, then where is faith? And what I mean by that is this. You have, throughout the entire Bible, God getting people to their breaking point. It was more than they could bear. Moses, in the wilderness, more than he could bear. Listening to the children of Israel over and over again, more than he could bear. Noah builds an ark, 120 years, more than a man can bear when it's never rained before. Hannah praying in a relationship that's against God. She's married to a man who's married to another woman. She's living for Jesus in a time that's more than she can bear. Esther is calling out to God in time of famine and in time of persecution. It's more than she can bear. All the miracles of Christ that John chapter number 5, the man sitting at the pool of Bethesda for 38 years, every time he goes to get to the pool, somebody jumps in front of him. That is more than he can bear. Lazarus is dead for four days. His death is more than he can bear. I want to ask you, we, we say a lot of times that God won't put any more, more on us than what we can bear. And here's what we say. But he must think we have bigger shoulders than we do. Amen. Here's my, here's my point to this. If God doesn't put more on us than what we can bear, what's the need of having Christ because we can bear it? God puts more on us than what we can bear so that we can fulfill our biblical charge to cast our cares upon Him for He cares for us. If we can carry it, why cast it? If we can carry it, why cast it? I feel like y'all leaving me just a touch. I, I'm letting you know God gets us to the breaking point so that we will break in His hands. God puts more on us than what we can bear that way we can take the load to Christ. I want to let you know what Scripture says. It's not so much that God won't put more on us than what we can bear. It's 1 Corinthians 10 and 13 where it says that every temptation is common to man, but God is faithful that in every temptation He's made a way to escape it. I want to give you encouragement on a Thursday night that if you are tempted to live in your past, God has made a way that we can escape it. Amen. If we are tempted to struggle, if we are tempted to be overcome by our struggles, God has made a way for us to escape the struggles. Would you say amen? amen. If we are tempted, if we are tempted to live uh, in an overcome life of drama, if we're tempted to live uh, in a life that we're overcome by our own thoughts, God has made a way of escape. I, I want to thank God just for a minute. And I know it sounds like I'm getting preaching. I keep, I, I, I've got two, a, a Bible in my hand. I'm trying to get to the scripture. And I don't want to let go of this page because it's the only thing i got that's keeping me from just go ahead and preach a little bit. Uh, but I, 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 I want to say this to you. Uh, and Courtney will know this and some of the rest. Uh, in, in the behavior field, we call it redirection and distraction. And that's what God uses as a way of escape of temptation. Uh, if you're tempted to sin and you're tempted to lust and you're tempted uh, to old habits and to old things that uh, will get you in trouble with God and get you in trouble at home and get you in trouble in your job, are we meant to just fall to that temptation? Are we meant to just fall to that sin? Uh, Romans chapter 6 would tell us this. How are we that are dead to sin How should live any longer therein? Romans chapter 5 will give us this. How should we? Amen. How shall we use the grace of God How that we should continue in sin? And Paul would say, How God forbid. How Lord, and I can think of the message that Brother Josh preached us just a few weeks ago. How when you're tempted to lust, you're tempted to sin, you're tempted to regret, you're tempted to regress, you're tempted to have depression, you're tempted to pride, you're tempted to ego, you're tempted to bitterness. God's got a distraction ready. Whether it's His blessings and you refocus yourself on the blessings of God. Whether it's the amazing grace of God and you refocus and you let God redirect you on His good grace. If it's singing and I thought tonight, amen, I'm going to hang on to these pages but I'm going to move around this a little bit. Listen, I, I, I was thinking tonight, they go no place, and I can remember when I was in 
with our tail more than it should. If we would get our Bible and read until that storm of temptation passes, I want to preach to you that failure is not mandatory. Falling to sin, falling to temptation of any kind is not mandatory. If you have made failure mandatory, you're living against God. Greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. Have second Peter, if you would, have chapter number one, and then verse, I believe, number one. Have Simon Peter, a servant and an apostle of Jesus Christ, have to them that have obtained like precious faith have with us the righteousness of God and our Savior Jesus Christ. Have grace and peace be multiplied unto you have for the knowledge of God and Jesus Christ our Lord according to his divine power and hath given us unto all things have that pertain unto life and godliness. And then notice if you would with me tonight how as we're reading in 1 Peter how God uses Peter a man that was
friend. I, 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 I want to look at the first thing that you would. Hey, man, and you pray for me. I, I don't want to preach everything of God. I want to preach what God did. Verse number three. According as his divine power hath given us all things that pertain. Hey, man, am I on the right verse? I believe I am. Hallelujah for that. Hey, man, that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that hath called us to his glory. I want to reread verse 3 according as his divine power hath given us unto all things that pertain unto life uh, and godliness uh, through the knowledge of him that hath called us uh, to glory and virtue of uh, the danger and subtraction. Now I want to let you know uh, right out of the key, the uh, first thing you and I do not need to subtract uh, in any way, shape, form, or fashion from our lives. Uh, we do not need to subtract Jesus from our lives. Uh, listen, my beloved friend, uh, the only pure
abiding in my soul and in your soul because of Jesus Christ. Oh, my God. 
kids. God may not take your spouse, but I am letting you know that when you choose to start getting away from God, God will not take anything. We will start giving it away. Amen. And I don't know about anybody else. Hey, can I preach to you? I pray you hear me. Now we're about done tonight. Hey, man, I pray you can hear me tonight. I want the joy of God, Mike, in my life. I want the peace of God. I want to be able to forgive. Now can I say this? And I don't know how many have been there. I've been bitter. But Scott, I don't want any of that. I've been low. I don't want any of that. I've been in ditches. I don't want any of that.
you this while they're getting ready. How many of you, and I'll raise my hand, I'm guilty along with you. How many of you can notice there's a lot of places in your life where you can have more Jesus? And can I say something? We are in 2022. Ain't nobody doing without 2022. Whatever, whatever areas in our life, and I'll say this and we'll say, whatever areas in our life, Pastor Bob, that we could have more Jesus in, there's something already in that spot. Amen. Oh, what are you saying? Get up first thing in the morning. Hey, you forgive me. I ain't got my devotionals out like I ought to. I've got this new thing called iPhone now. And that ain't an excuse, but I'm telling you, I'm getting my tail whipped by it. But you don't know what happens first thing in the morning? You get up. Go sit down in the chair. And I'll give Facebook notifications, half a glance. And then you know what it's time to do? Hey, man, because some of y'all fell out on this little deal I made with y'all. It's time to get the book of Psalms. That's where I've been at the past number of months in our devotions. But I, I, I gotta wonder something, Huds. And Huds is looking at me, so I'm gonna talk to him. <laughs> I gotta wonder. Like just in our mornings, you got coffee, you got breakfast, you got social media, you got the news, you got all the updates. But do you have Jesus in your mornings? And then throughout the day, work hits. And, and some, some folks don't work, I understand that. But how many of you have looked at today and said, boy, there's some stuff there in my day. I, I, could have, I could have some more Jesus during my day. But it's not without. We could check on somebody. We could talk to somebody. We could pray. We could listen to a message. We could listen to some singing. We could get where we could we we could. And I'll give you this lastly. How many of you have ever said, and I, I said this today, I'm not lazy, Kim, until I get home. <laughs> Work, go to the gym, do counseling, do whatever I got to do. <laughs> Caitlin, when I get out of the shower. It's done there. I gotta wonder how many of us look at Jesus like that. Like, hey, I work all day. By the time I get home, I'm done. And I gotta wonder, and I'm gonna say this is done, not work. I gotta wonder in our seasons, whether it's seasons of busyness, seasons of struggle, seasons of discouragement, seasons of your your living sorrow, reliving sorrow. Seasons of trouble, whatever season you're in, you're letting your season have all of you. But you're giving very little of you to Jesus. That makes sense to anybody in the house? Yes. I gotta wonder how much our season would change if instead of letting our season have all of us, we started giving our season to Jesus. I don't know, that might not make any sense. Let's stand, let's sing. I'd rather end on the confusing note on the note make sense. Amen. Let's stand tonight. The longer I serve, the sweeter it grows. If this is a moment somebody needs to pray, you should add Jesus now. You should. You should bring yourself to Christ. If this is a moment, you should let God minister to you. You should do that. Add Jesus to this moment. And then when you go home, work on the addition and subtraction. God bless you. Let's sing.
that when you start taking yourself away from God, you're taking a part of what he revolves around? Is anybody there to already kill him? Amen. What do you mean? Shepherd has sheep, 9,900 sheep, and he knows what he's raising, Jerry, and one of them goes astray. Sheep are prone to wonder. One <laughs> sheep goes astray. He could have raised, he could have, could have had anything he wanted, Bob. Could, could have had cattle, could have had anything he wanted. But he chose sheep that were prone to wonder. And when one of them went away, he said, you're who I'm all about. So when you go away from me, you've taken a little bit of my heart away from me. I'd love to ask you, does Jesus deserve to have the part of you you're giving? Or does he deserve to have all of you? Hey, if he only deserves what you're giving him, keep giving it. But if he deserves to have more, I'd get to the addition business. Amen. Be glad to say it. Can you say amen? amen. amen. I'm looking forward to gathering in this Sunday. I'm looking real forward to it. Sunday morning, 10 o'clock. Uh, we've been having blessings in Sunday school. Heaven's been helping. Uh, been having a wonderful time of worship. Folks have been coming in. Uh, we've got some visitors, some folks that are coming back. I'll be honest, John, John Gebhardt was here a couple weeks ago. I'd like to see him and his family come back. Uh, be much in prayer for them. I've been talking to Gavin. Be much in prayer for them. We've got loads of folks that have been visiting. Please be in prayer. Please do. I like the soul's heart. We'll be some people's homes. Yes. Uh, we'll change them. We've got the room for it. I don't know. Look around. Y'all was good during the preaching. But <laughs> JC Preach gets out here. Be in prayer. Uh, announcements, anything.